this is Perzines for Noble Desktop, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do compositing Adobe After Effects. Uh, we're going to be working with a piece of green screen footage here today. You can see it over here. Let's load, let's zoom in a bit. There we go. You see this? Um, and we're going to be using the key light effect. Um, key light is actually not made by Adobe. It's made um, by a, fr a British software company named The Foundry. Um, I think now nowadays you could find it by the name Framestore, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, Adobe licenses it from them so that they can bundle it with After Effects at no additional cost to you. So um, that's that's great. It comes free with the software, essentially. So basically, we're going to be uh, isolating and cleaning up this footage over here. Um, and then we're going to be adding some effects to it so it uh, blends visually with the rest of the layers we have going on here. Um, what we're doing in this tutorial is called uh, chroma keying. Um, you can see like, um, you see this green background up here, up, up here, sorry. Um, and it's usually done with either a green or a blue screen behind your subject. Um, while any solid color would work for your screen, most commonly you're going to see blue and green used because those are the colors like that are furthest from uh, human skin tones. Um, so let's preview the animation. So you can see how I scrub through the timeline and um, you see how like the woman stands out here from the background image and uh, she's got a couple of color effects applied to her. So uh, you can contrast this with the original footage over here, which is just her on like, just on a green screen. We're actually gonna be moving that green color with uh, the key light effect. So chroma keying is like useful for combining uh, moving green screen footage with like other background elements. And uh, with the key light effect, we can quickly isolate pieces of footage. So that allows us to apply all kinds of effects and animations to our isolated footage and uh, background objects. So the main assets we're gonna be using is uh, just a single piece of footage here. Um, and there's like pre-comp text included as well within the file. Um, you can find these projects with all those assets uh, included in the video description below. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is dragging and dropping uh, the footage of the woman right into our composition window. I'm going to hit S for scale on my keyboard. I'm going to shrink this down, shrink this down um, until she's, let's put her at around 35%. Um, when working with, uh, you know, different kinds of footages, it's pretty common to have them like all sorts of sizes. So, you know, you're going to want to just adjust them to fit whatever you're working on. Um, you know, I'm going to actually put this at 32%. I like that a little better. Here we go. I'm actually going to shift her down a little bit. So the bottom of, of the figure is like flush with the bottom of the uh, composition window. All right. Perfect. So the green screen, you know, the elephant in the room, we, we, uh, want to get rid of that thing. So we're going to head into effects over here. I'm going to type in key light. And there's one in particular we're looking for. So you see this one's got a long name. It's uh, key light, um, it's called key light plus key cleaner plus spill suppressor. And it's got a long name, but don't be intimidated. Drag and drop it over here. You're not gonna see a difference at first. Um, and basically what this is, it's the basic key light effect with uh, some added effects attached to it that makes it easier to clean up our green screen video. So like I said, nothing changes visibly, but after we uh, tweak some settings, it's gonna look totally different. So we're going to be changing, so I'm going to be actually going through a couple of these um, terms so you understand what they mean and how you can use them in your own uh, project. Um, but basically, the first thing we're going to be doing is head over to Screen Color, and we're going to grab that eyedrop uh, tool. And what this is, basically, the Screen Color, you're telling the program what color do you want to make transparent. And we're going to be picking uh, the green color over here. Um, and you could choose a wider variety of colors. If you have a, a, a Mac, you hold down Command as you uh, move around your eyedropper. I have a PC, so I'm going to be holding down Alt for a wider variety of colors. And I'm trying to gonna I'm gonna get like the brightest green I can over here. There we go. Nice. You see that? Disappears from around her. Now you can see a bit of a green haze around here, but for the most part, that green screen's gone. You can see it a bit in the corners. But we're going to be uh, doing some stuff to get rid of that. So the second thing I'm going to be doing um, is actually I'm going to be making what's called the garbage mat. I'm going to grab the pen tool over here. And I'm going to just draw kind of like a wide pointy shape around her. Reason being, I'm doing this to cut out extra bits of the uh, footage that I don't need. So if I don't need it, why would I want to bother keying it, you know? So that's that. 
So I'm going to head over to my selection tool so I don't accidentally draw anything else with the pen tool. All right. And then over here where it says view. So intermediate result is showing us like with the green haze around her, um, but also like the with the, um, you know, the screen color removed. I want to move this over to uh, screen mat. What this does, you see this black and white uh, look at our footage. What this does is that it reduces our, um, you know, our, our footage into grayscale. And wherever the black is, that's what's being removed. Wherever the white is, that's the footage that we're keeping. But you can see within our footage, there's like some shades of gray. And we actually don't want that. We want to get our footage as high contrast as possible to really successfully make a very clean uh, key. Since key lighting depends a lot upon the contrast from the figure from the background, we're going to want to be able to differentiate, like tell the difference where the edges of our figure are so we can clean them up better, make them sharper, you know, stand out more. All right. So let's head over to Key Cleaner. Um, this is actually turned on already. So um, basically reduced chatter refers to as the footage moves along, there might be a couple of speckles in and out, in and out of uh, green, black, you know, uh, colors that we don't want. Um, and if I flip that on, that would get rid of that. Um, the footage that we have actually should be all right, so we don't need that. Um, and then we're going to also turn on advanced spill suppressor. So that is also going to prevent like any uh, reflective green that has gone into our footage. Like if she's holding something shiny, you know, any any background color that got into our main footage, that should get rid of that. Um, so that now that that's the additional effects are looked at, we're going to head into the detailed effects. So, um, you know, there's quite a few over here. Um, you know, there's things like screen pre blur, which refers to like, do you want to blur your, you know, your, your figure itself? Um, screen mat, inside mask, outside mask, that refers to the masks within and outside the figure. Um, you know, and there's a couple of other additional effects. I'll show you the ones that we're going to be working with. We're going to toggle open screen mat because that refers to the, the combined uh, mat that we're working with. And so clip back, clip, sorry, clip black and clip white. So clip black and clip white refer to the ind individual. It's a bit like the, le almost like the level setting in Photoshop if you work with that. Um, and wait, basically what that means is that I can intensify the whites, I can intensify the blacks, I could pull back the blacks, I could pull black the whites within my footage. So we're gonna work with that. I actually want my clip black, I'm gonna put it around 30 points to see how that looks. Okay, okay, not bad. It, it got rid of a lot of that, that dark gray. All right, let's pull back the white perhaps. How's that gonna look? Okay. I'm gonna put it up to 65 and see how that looks. Um, you know, I'm going to experiment with my settings over here and then I'm going to check how it looks like, uh, you know, what it looks like at the end. Um, is there anything else that I want to do here? Screen softness, uh, screen shrink and grow. Oh, oh, and clip roll back refers to if you like mess too much with the clip black and clip white. Clip roll back kind of like softens both of them together. So it's not too aggressive. Um, screen softness just, it again, like softens the edges of your, your screen. Um, this pot black and this pot white, they're a bit like clip black and clip white. So what these guys do, like um, the this pot black one, it removes like bits of black if you have a white mat, um, but it simplifies a mat, so it makes it kind of look blobby. Um, here, you can see, yeah, you see, it's like making our mat more undefined. For some things that works, um, for our project, we're not actually gonna be doing that. Um, this pot white, um, it does the same thing, but for, uh, bits of white, again, it simplifies the mat, makes it look a bit blobby. Not what we want for this, uh, but, you know, it works for some projects. Um, by the way, the despill bias and the alpha bias, I apologize, I skipped over them before, but what these guys do is that, like, if, uh, bits of your image become transparent because it accidentally maybe had some, you know, the background color... Uh, spill over into it, it will, uh, you know, depending on what color you pick, that should fix it up. Um, you know, if you choose the color to kind of like pull out of that. Um, but again, our footage should be okay without it. So those are um, a couple of the terms. Like I said, there's quite a few here. Um, but I think getting a handle on like a couple of the basic ones is a good place to start if you are new to key light, uh, to the key light effect. Now we're going to head up to view. 
And now that we seem to have gotten a clean mat, let's put it down to final result on, on uh, view. And there we go. So this is what our key light looks. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Um, I, I noticed that my uh, mask here is cutting off a bit of her, so I'm actually going to stretch that down a bit. Thank you. All right, and let's play our clip to see if our key light uh, has worked all the way through. All right, so you can see as I scroll through my timeline, it looks pretty good. That's a pretty good key, and it didn't take much work to get it done. So what we're going to be doing next is actually applying uh, just one more additional effect. So let's get started. All right, we're going to duplicate our uh, footage layer. Um, on my PC, I hit Control-D. On a, a Mac, you'd be hitting Command-D. I'm going to hit Enter my PC, Return on the Mac to rename it. I'm going to name this Color Overlay. Um, that should indicate, uh, you know, what we're going to be doing next. And if you remember that blue-green kind of view we had in the beginning, that's what we're going to be applying here. I'm actually going to click the little box next to the name. I'm going to change it to purple because I like having my layers all quickly visible by different colors in the layer stack. That's just a personal preference. Um, and now we're going to head over to, let's see, effects and presets. I'm going to put in four color gradient. Oh, popped up just like that. Drag and drop onto color overlay. And whoa, you can already see uh, where we're headed with this. So it comes with these preset colors, but um, I actually want colors pulled from the background mostly, so it blends in a little more. And all I'm going to be doing is just uh, grabbing these eyedroppers and pulling from the background certain hues. Grabbing maybe another blue. Nothing too crazy. I'm, I'm kind of avoiding the greens because those are quite saturated. I think it would be too much, so I'm mostly heading with the blues right now. I know they're pretty subtle, but, you know, and I uh, I didn't want to make it too um, overpowering. And I'm actually going to change the coordinates of some of these color gradient points, because there's four of them, and these little four dots control where those gradients kind of like end and begin. So I'm bringing them a little closer together, so there's, you know, they're more apparent and there's a higher contrast within them. And uh, now we're going to change the color mode. Um, so if you don't have this interface visible, like the layer modes and stuff, you probably have this one. So you just hit toggle switches and modes to, you know, go between the two. And on color overlay, I'm going to choose hard light. So that will blend my current layer with the one below it um, in a way that the lower label layer is still visible, but now has this blue U to it. Um, and yeah, that's it for these effects. The last thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to head over to Project. I'm going to grab the pre-comp text and frame, drop it below, you know, the other footage. And I'm also going to shift a little bit into the timeline wherever the words appear. Grab these two layers, shift them over a little bit to the side so they're not on top of the words. That's it. All done. So with this technique, we can separate all sorts of footage out from uh, green screens. And in fact, it doesn't actually have to be live footage. Like you can use any kind of high contrast footage, like video stuff. So you can check out free assets and sites like pexels.com. It's P-E-X-E-L-S.com. And they provide everything from like 3D footage to live footage. Um, you could stack effects onto isolated key light layers, add effects below, go for like a punchy graphic look with separate color effects, or you could like uh, head for something like more natural looking with like a lot of soft multiply layers below and like light effects. And you can even key like multiple objects out at once too, like with du duplicate footage layers. So yeah, that's all for this uh, tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to composite in Adobe After Effects. And this has been Sapporo Designs for Noble Desktop.